Okay, in this example, we'll look at probably one of, one of the most common questions, techniques that folks ask, and that is how do I, how to personalize the course with the learner's own choice of an avatar or character. It could even be a graphic or anything, but the learner will make a, a choice on the first screen and then that graphic or avatar, character, whatever, is carried through for the rest of the course. Now, the neat thing here about this type of lesson, usually you'll just see one way to do it. There's a recommended way, so you get one way and someone shows it. But there's actually about three different ways that you can approach this in terms of how you're working and kind of depends on the project that you're working on, uh, what makes the most sense. So let me just show you this real quick for an example. This will be sort of like the final example that we're building. So we have these three characters on the slide, the learner clicks one and it's selected and you can see up top that there's a, a variable reference displaying the variable value that's been set. You could use true false variables, you, or you can use number variables or or text variables for this type of example, you need you have to use one of those two. You can't use true false because we have more than two characters. Now the neat thing here is when they go to a slide, you actually have several different ways to approach this. You can use a timeline event. So when the timeline starts, the character is, is the states are changed for the character based on, on the variable's value. That's probably the most common way. You could also do it based on the well, I could just keep going down here, a slide master. Now the slide master value is that you can put it once on the slide master and then you just use that throughout the rest of the course. Another option is object events, which is very similar to timeline events, but rather than starting to making the change on the character based on when the timeline starts, it's when the object's timeline starts. What does that look like? Well, I'll show you what that looks like, but it's another way that you can reuse those triggers because they're actually attached to the character. Anyway, that'll make sense hopefully soon. Let's just start here with a new new slide, new beginning, and we'll just get started. So I'm gonna bring in a couple characters here real quick. This is all standard basic storyline. Let's say uh, we'll get some characters, Let's say Teresa works, and what we're gonna do here is first set up one character, and then what we can do is, is duplicate and work from that. So there's Teresa, let's make her a little bigger. That should be fine. Name it, Teresa. And what do we wanna do also with this? Let's just give her a little better expression. All right, happy is good. So that's my first character, maybe make it a little bit smaller. Now for this uh, character, I do wanna have a state that shows when the character is selected. Uh, that'll be also how we evaluate which, which variable value to assign to the character. So we'll say edit states, and we'll use a selected state. Selected state means you're clicking the object, it's showing that it's active or selected. So uh, we could play with this if we want. We wanted to have that silhouette effect here in the beginning. So we just select the normal state and we can right click our character and just come down here to format picture. And then we will uh, lower the contrast and then maybe even make it a little bit brighter. Now that's probably going to affect my selected state. So I'm going to select selected and I'm just going to bring this back over here. Zero, zero, and there we go. All right, so now the normal state will be that silhouette and the selected state will be the uh, full color. Click done, and what we can do now, because we've got the first character set up, is let's just duplicate the character. Um, favorite way I would like to use, I usually hold down the control key and click and drag. Uh, that's one way we can, we can um, duplicate objects. Change the character from design, character, and we'll keep the modern illustrated going here. And I think I have a few, Dante will be fine. And that should carry over. Let's check our states to be sure. Yep, there we go, right? So that looks good. And then we'll name him and then we'll make one more. All right, so we're almost, almost finished setting this one up and then hold down the control key, click and drag. I guess I could always try a different one, like control D. So let's change. Dante here and we'll make another character. So I'm just setting this up. However you, you know, you want to stylize them, that's up to you. You just, you do need a selected state for them so that you have a, a state that we can evaluate when we set, when we set the, the, uh, the variable. So did that change? I guess it already did, right? Yep, that was fast. Okay, so we'll change this to Camilla. All right, so the only thing I want to do now is just Probably don't need to lose my time doing this, but let's just select all the characters and then we will say format and then we'll align them 
on the baseline, the bottom, and then we'll distribute horizontally. All right. Now, at this point, it's not quite ready because if I were to preview this, this slide, the selected states are all going to work, but it's not going to do exactly what we want. We want that toggle effect where only, only one character can be selected at a time. Right now, because I just uh, set those states up, I can click each one and I get those states. Interesting that he is shifting. Maybe I dragged him in the, the state. I'm not going to worry about it, though. All right, so the thing I would want to do right here is I'm going to select these characters. So I get a selection around all of them, and I'm going to add a button set. I love button sets in Storyline. Right-click anywhere in that selected group. You choose button set down here, and we'll just say button set one. What does that do? Looks all the same, right? Doesn't look like anything happened. Well, if I preview it, you're going to see that only one of those characters can be selected. So essentially, they're acting like a uh, like a like a radio button, right? Like a radio button, you can only have one radio button selected. So that's what we want. All right, our characters are set up. I'm going to now create a variable. And a variable is how we hold the data for whichever the characters has been selected. So I have two choices here in this example. I can use a text variable or a number variable. Can't use true-false because I have more than two. If I only had two characters, a true-false version, a true-false variable would be perfect. So we'll come over here, and we're going to create a new variable. So I'll use text. And the reason I like to use text here is because I have the names. This is going to be really easy for me to identify which character gets which name because their names are right there, as opposed to 1, 2, 3. I don't know which character would be 1, 2, and 3. That doesn't make as much sense to me. It would still work. It would still work as a number variable, but I'm just going to use a text variable. So I'll say character, character, and text, and then the default value I'm going to leave is blank. So click OK. And that's great. There's my variable. Now, just a, a preference here is I like to put a variable reference here on the slide. I like to see the value, I see what, what, what value is assigned when I click each character. I don't necessarily want to use this for the learner, but I do like it for me because it helps me validate that when I click each character and I have that variable change, it just helps me verify that I set it up correctly or if I made a mistake, which is also uh, very likely. So what I'll do is I'm just going to insert a text box, insert, and then just a regular text box on the slide. With that blinking, I'm going to type out character. And this is just text. But then when I'm going, I'm going to put a space right there. And with that still blinking right there, still keeping this as an active text box, I'm going to insert the variable reference. Reference just means refer to or display the value of the variable. So up here to insert. And then we're going to come all the way over. And it's right here. Uh, my resolution's a little bit smaller here. So I'll just say, uh, click that little icon, and I'm going to insert the value. Now, the text that I inserted right here for a character, I, I don't need that. That could be anything right there, right? Whatever I typed out there. But I just want to insert this, this variable value on the slide. All right, so it looks the same, and but it won't look the same once we assign that value because instead of saying character, it's going to say the character's name. So that's what we're going to set up. We're going to set up next. All right, so character. And with that, I'm going to add my triggers now to adjust the variable of each character to change that value of character. Actually, let's say, let's say selected, and I'll just say selected, meaning which, which character has been selected. So that probably makes a little bit more sense. Character, character could be a little confusing. All right, so we'll add our first trigger, and this is how we work with variables. We're going to adjust the value of that variable. So my action is, what is it I want to do? I want to come down here, and I want to adjust the variable. So adjust variable. And the variable, the only variable we have at this point is character, right? I do have some built-in variables, but I want to use character. And I'm going to say set the character to a value of, and we'll just go in order. So I'm going to go uh, top to, uh, well, I don't know which one I just clicked. So hold on a second. I'll say Camilla. So we'll say set the value to Camilla. Camilla or Camilla? Camilla. Not when the timeline starts, so we're going to change the event, the when. We want to say when user clicks, and then I'm going to select Camilla. So this, this is why it's easy to work with text variables, because I can double check that the value of Camilla is being set to Camilla here in the, in the trigger wizard. So that works great. All right, so we got the first one set up. Let's just keep working efficiently. So I'm going to select this trigger, and I'm going to choose Copy. And I'm just going to paste it. Well, I'll select the next one, paste for Dante, 
and then you can see right here set character equals value of Dante and it doesn't matter that I'm using capitalization title case or, or lowercase here because I'm not asking the learner to fill in anything I'll paste that variable one more time I'm just setting a value for each of these characters so all three now have a value set when it's clicked when they're clicked now if I preview this this is where that variable reference is going to be super helpful because I'll see who's selected Camilla's selected Dante selected uh, Teresa's selected right variable can only hold one piece of data at a time so I can only see one name right there at a time all right everything here is setting up is set up correctly now I need to make this work so here's what we're going to do I'm going to go into my first one my first slide and we'll look at the timeline event so the way which is probably most common is as soon as this timeline starts we're going to ask storyline what is the value of that variable and then we're going to change the states of the character so we do need to build out our character so what I'll do real quick here is I'll say Camilla and we can leave her standing that's that's fine just to keep things moving so I'm going to add a new state and I'm going to call this Camilla again and the only reason I'm using a new state called Camilla is again it's just going to be that much easier for me to identify when I'm setting up my triggers and not having to think who's in the normal state who's the normal character um, it's just easier to rename this and have have two two of the same state even though uh, normal is what we typically see now I'm going to add a new state and I'll call this one Teresa Teresa and then I just need to replace this character with Teresa so character so we do have to stack all these characters within the same graphic so you're thinking well if you need a different poses and different states you'd need to either add additional states here for the character or you could build several characters with multi with multi custom states for each of those characters so my last one here is Dante and then I just replace that character with Dante now the neat thing is once I set this up I'll just copy this to each of the other slides so we have Camilla Teresa and Dante and what we'll do then is as soon as this timeline starts we want to change the character to the proper state so pretty simple pretty straightforward uh, but we just have to work with that variables value so new trigger and we always ask ourselves again what is it we want to do I want to change the state of my character and let's just say uh, we'll change the character to one of the custom states so we'll say uh, first one's Camilla not when the user clicks but when the timeline starts so this is a timeline event all, all the way down here timeline starts not on character but on the slide and then that's our it works but we do need a condition because otherwise it's going to change to the last trigger if we had three triggers triggers fire top to bottom so it would go Camilla Teresa and then Dante so Dante would always show so we do need a condition that says if that character value is equal to and then this is Teresa now here it matters if we use capital or not so if you don't remember what you set up well, actually it needs to be Camilla if, if you don't remember if you uh, used a capital C or title case then you could say equals and then says equal to an ignore case so that just gives you an extra protection if you don't remember how you initially spelled it all right there we go that's good now I'm just going to copy this trigger copy it once paste it again and now I just have to make those those changes so we'll say Dante if it's equal to Dante and then I'll paste one more time and then this is going to be for uh, Teresa if it equals Teresa okay so let's preview our project now this is the most common way the only reason you may not want to do this is that you if you're doing this over 20 30 slides you have to copy those triggers over each time so here's my timeline and then there's Dante now the triggers are persistent throughout the course so if I came back over here to choose a character uh, let's say in this case, case, uh, case Teresa and then I come over here it's Teresa if I come over to character again and we'll say Camilla and so that's is why I have that variable reference here on the slide it just lets me double check make sure things are working I'll delete this before I share it with my learners but it does help me verify all right cool it is working so I'm going to copy this character control C and this time I'm going to go to the slide master so I'm going to 
not paste the character here on the slide master. I mean on the slide level, I'm actually going to paste it on the slide master. So I'm going to go to view and slide master. Now here's the thing, this slide right here is called slide master. It's only being used by one slide. I, if I put this slide, if I put the character up here on this top slide, on the parent slide, you see how it's going to cascade down through all of the slides. I may not want this particular character on that slide. So just keep that in mind that uh, you may need to set up an extra layer, an extra slide layout just for that special character. All right, so there she is. Now I'm going to go try to copy all those triggers that I just created. Uh, timeline events, I'll probably have to make some changes so I can select those, right click and then choose copy. Come back to slide master, let's go view, slide master. Now the, the, the nice thing here is every slide layout that has this particular uh, character on it and the triggers, paste, yeah, so I have to change those. Um, I will, won't have to add the character to the slide, it'll automatically be there, huge efficiency. So now I just need to come in here and say this first one should be um, character one to Camilla when the value is Camilla, and it should all just be character one, character one. Now if I go back to my slide level, there it is, you can see it, but there's no object here on the timeline. So uh, it's there, but it's just not, it's not accessible to me. Uh, we'll preview one more time and just double check that. Probably don't need to go through all of those characters, but it just helps me see it. Perfect, right? And then we just try one more, and then we go to Slide Master, and we have it. So that's super efficient. Now there's one other way we can do this. I'm gonna copy, whoop, can't copy her. <laughs> I gotta copy it from this one, Control C. And let's come down here to Object Timelines. This is probably my favorite because it's the easiest way to reuse this, and we won't have to copy and paste those triggers every time. So here's what we'll do. I'm gonna grab the, Let's just grab the timeline event triggers. So I'm going to select all three of those, right? So uh, copy the paste, uh, selected trigger, come back over here, select my character and paste. Now, the difference here, I just need to add the character again because I don't want to have to lose my time doing this every time I paste those triggers. Notice how this one right here, if I open up the trigger, change the state of character to Camilla when the timeline starts on the character. So it's not starting on this slide. Instead, it's actually starting on the character. A lot of folks don't know you can do that, which means that if this character doesn't start, you know, and doesn't come into the slide until three seconds, that's when the timeline begins and that's when that's going to change. So this is super efficient because it's not really a timeline event as much as it is a character object event. And watch this, if I control C to copy this character and I make a new slide, with nothing else on it and I paste it. Look at that, the triggers, they all come with it and I have all those triggers right there. So if you are doing this on the slide level, maybe because you want to move the character around or change the states, the triggers all come with it. You just save yourself a load of time uh, doing it this way. So again, the only difference is, is that the timeline is starting on the character object rather than on the actual timeline event. So um, a lot of times folks just don't know that they, if they select the character when they first add the triggers, then obviously the triggers are assigned to the character. And you always go back up here and say, no, I want it to start with the slide. You don't have to do that. You could start it with the actual, with the actual character. All right, well, that's how you can uh, really display a custom avatar or graphic throughout the course. I think time uh, slide master is probably the most common, the, probably the most efficient use. However, if you have to move the characters around, nudge them and have different placement for them, maybe using the the object timeline as a, as a means to fire the event makes more sense. But anyway, hope that's helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always follow up with us in the community. Thanks.